Hello boys and girls, my name is Ian. And my name is Jude. Let's bow down for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Thank you for the good love and salvation. We do not take it for granted. Dear fathers, we are taught, may we understand what may we understand what we are being taught in the name of Jesus. For it is just may pray and believe. Amen. you been? I hope you've been keeping safe. My name is teacher Jackie Nyakenywa and glad to be here. And with me is Elsa Chebosi from Sita Moodley and Christian Kujo from Sita Moodley. Awesome. We are so excited to be here and thank you worship team. Thank you for a nice time of worship. I hope you're at home. You have your Bible, you have your notebook and your pen. Because you need to write down some things that you write, uh, we learn um, so that later you can study. If you don't have, run and grab as we have this enjoyable time. I don't know whether you've been watching the other lessons. Have you? Are you sure? Perfect. Can you share with the person next, seated next to you 
what we learned last week. What was the topic? What was it about? Did you memorize? Did you do the memory verse? Elsa, what was last week's topic? Last week's topic was praying with faith. And praying with faith is praying, believing that God will answer all your prayers. Nice. And what was the memory verse? Christian, do you remember? Yes. It was from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 24. And it says? And it says, Before they call out, I will answer. And when they are yet speaking, I will hear. Awesome. What an assurance that even before we speak, God hears and he will answer. And today's topic is praying through your pain. And because you have your notebook and pen with you, Write it down. Praying through your pain. What is pain? When you hear the word pain, what comes to mind? Can you share with the person seated next to you? If you are alone, you can still shout it out. Elsa, what is pain? Pain is a highly unpleasant feeling. A highly, from the dictionary, a highly and pleasant feeling. Very in a place, or what is it? Um, it can either be physical pain or emotional pain. Yeah, it can be physical or emotional. And when it is physical, let's see, what happens? Um, physical pain is like when you've had an injury mm. or you got hurt. Yeah. Or you got hurt like you hit on a thing and that, that kind of feeling, it's the highly and pleasant feeling. Or sometimes you wake up and you have a headache. And we say it's a headache. It's a pain in the head, isn't it? Or sometimes it's a pain in the stomach. And we call it a stomach ache. Right? But there's another pain. Christian, that emotional pain. What are some of the things that we can say that is a pain, yet nothing inflicted it? Uh, emotional pain. You can experience emotional pain when you've lost a loved one. Yes, when you've lost a loved one. And something bad has happened around you. Or something bad has happened around you, actually. That is what triggers that emotional pain. Um, you can't explain it. You've been told a bad news. That pain in the ache. Or sometimes your parents have lost a job. And so you know the school, you might change schools or your school fees is hard to get, and there's a pain of not going to school sometimes. It feels painful. Or um, sometimes it's people saying bad things about us. Sometimes it is when they abuse us, isn't it? Or because something we can't do something, so they say these bad things to us. And in our story today, is a story about someone who had gone through that emotional pain. We can read our Bibles, guys at home, right? First Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 to 20, and Elsa and Christian will help us with the Bible story. It is First Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 to 20. I hope you've written down. Elsa. Um, there was a certain man from Ramathaim, a Zufite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tuhu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up with, from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, who were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came from, for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to his wife Penina and to all her sons and daughters. But Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her. And the, and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year, whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord. Her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. 
Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once when, when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the door of the post of the temple of the Lord's house. In, in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made this vow, O Jehovah of armies, if I look upon the affliction of your servant and, the, and you remember me and you do not forget your servant and give to a servant a male child, I will give him to, to Jehovah all these days of his life and no razor will touch his head. I will be, uh, while she prayed for a long time before Jehovah, Eli was watching her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart. Only her lips were trembling, but her voice was not heard. So Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli told her, How long will you stay drunk? Stop drinking your wine. At this, Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman under great stress. I, do not, I have not drunk wine or anything alcoholic, but I am pouring my soul before Jehovah. Do not take your servant for a worthless woman. For I have been speaking until now out of my great anguish and distress. Then Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the Lord of Israel grant your petition, that you may have what you asked for him from him. To this she said, Let your servant find favor in your eyes. And the woman went, uh, went her way and ate, and her face was no longer downcast. Then they got up early in the morning and bowed before the Jehovah, after which they returned to the house in Rama. Elkanah had sexual relations with his wife Hannah and Jehovah gave attention to her. Within a year, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to her son and named him Samuel because she said, if it is from Jehovah, I have asked him. Amen. Amen. Uh, Elsa, do we see the pain here in this story? Yes. Uh -huh. Hannah experienced emotional pain yes. because Penina used to taunt her, mock her, and tease her for not having children. Yeah. It made Anna, Hannah very bitter and sad. Yeah, she was really sad. Every year they are going to Shiloh, coming back, and uh, she has no child. Yet Penina had many. And it's not like the husband didn't love her. We are told in the Bible that the husband loved her. Then what happened in her pain? What did she do? Through her pain, she, she told Je Jehovah that sh she will dedicate the son to, to him, to serve him in the temple for the rest of his life. So Eli found her praying, trembling, and speaking, with, and, speaking and no voice was heard. So Eli thought she was drunk. Yeah. Yani, in that deep pain, she just poured her pain to the Lord eh? until she was moving her lips like a drunk. And you can imagine, it's in that pain. She, that's the pain she was pouring out to the, to the Lord. And there are two things that we learn from this story. That one, in this, in, through our difficult moments, those pains that we are talking about, those emotional pains, through those difficult things that maybe we are going through as a family or individuals, we should take them to God in, in prayer, just like Hannah in the story and how she was, she just poured herself to the Lord. That is what we learn. And secondly, that really God takes care understands our pain and takes care, isn't it? Because something happened at the end when we are told that what happened? Ellie told her to go in peace and wished her to, to get what she desired. After a year, she got pregnant and had a son and then to him somewhere. Yes, the Lord answered those prayers. And you know, sometimes um, we, we seem like, it seems like God is not answering our prayers. Yeah, we... We are praying year after year, week after week, month after month. But God hears 
and God is working something. And in times of those pain, we should really just go to the Lord in prayer. I don't know, you may be asking there, how do I just go to God in prayer? How do? Because he loves us and we are his children. First thing is to have a relationship with God, isn't it? That when you read these Bible stories, you go back to the Bible and you read something and it encourages you and it reminds you and then you're able to, to be encouraged and you go into prayer. So you have to be a child of, of God. So I don't know whether you're seated there and you're wondering, are you, have you given your life to Christ? Would you do like to do it now? That's the first step. So let's pray if you want to be a believer. Say this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you this morning. I am a sinner. Please forgive me all my sins. I pray that you help me to grow in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you're a child of God. And so all your burdens, you can now go before God as a child of God. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what pain you all are going any you're going through. Many of us have many different kinds. Maybe it's a pain of having being different from other people and you're tormented, isn't it? And sometimes it's something that your family is going through. And sometimes it's uh this sometimes you are body shamed, even in school. I don't know. Elsa, would you like to pray with us that the Lord may help us to pray in pain? Not to, because sometimes we tend to forget in prayer, but it's time to run to God in, in prayer. We can pray for all those of us who have pain, that we may be remembered to go back to God in prayer and the Lord may help us in those pains. Let's bow our heads for of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you may heal the people who have been taunted, taunted, and mocked, and teased for being different. I pray that you may heal our pain and comfort and comfort all those who mourn, who mourn for their loved ones, for the bereaved. I thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life, and thank you for everything that you've done for us. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and believe. Amen. 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 And now it's time for our memory verse. And our memory verse for the day is First Peter, Peter chapter, chapter 5, verse 7. And it says, Leave all, all your worries to him, for, for he cares for you. Exactly. Leave all your worries to, to him, for he cares, cares for you. For he cares for you. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. I hope guys at home you've written it down so that you memorize out through the week, so that uh, it helps you to remind. And in prayer, and when in pain, you remember, leave all your worries to God. And I hope that you'll also download the journal so that you do it every day. There's something for you to do, some work for you to do, and then you, you do the memory work that you've just done. And that will be good for you. And from us, I hope that you have a blessed week ahead. It is. Bye-bye.